What's going on, y'all? It's Keith Carlos, the first male winner of America's Next Top Model and former NFL player. And you're watching FaceTime with Todd Wharton. From Times Square in New York City, it's FaceTime with Todd Wharton. With special guest, Keith Carlos. everyone to another episode of FaceTime with Todd Wharton. I'm the man, your host, Todd Wharton. Now, before we get to the show, let's get to a new announcement. Now, you all know we do monologues, skits, parodies, and much more. So I decided let's add a new skit to FaceTime with Todd Wharton. We're going to entitle that Funny Time with FaceTime. That's right. We're going to scour the internet and look for those funny videos that entertain us every day. Now, today we have a new video from Baruch Barraquette. And we're going to call this video Five Minute Break. Why don't you guys take a look? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the pool will be closed for five minutes. Exit the pool. Everyone out. I have a small bathroom break I have to do. <laughs> Open in five minutes. Thank you. Guys, we're going to have a great show for you tonight. My first guest tonight is actor, model, former NFL player. My man Keith Carlos is going to be in the house. And then later on the show, hip-hop artist Shoei is going to be performing his hit song, I Can't Stop, right here on FaceTime with Todd Wharton. So guys, stick around, and we'll be right back after these messages. FaceTime with Todd Wharton is brought to you by Dr. Porky. You ever notice when you're sick, nothing ever goes right? Uh, yes. Can I get a quart of wonton soup to be delivered? Hello? What do you mean I'll deliver it? Set his Chinese takeout. Guys, suck! Why do they make these medicine bottles so hard to open? <sighs> Man, this tea tastes like shit! No more! This is perfect! Oh, why can't I fall asleep? I don't have a guard warranty, stop calling me! Why does it smell like nachos? Oh. Uh, good morning. We, 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 what's the matter with you? I feel like shit. Uh, we, we can fix that. Here, you take it. Two of these pills, one half hour before eating. Thank you, Dr. Porky. Dr. Porky, so the next time you feel like a pig in a blanket, call Pig in a Blanket. Welcome back to the show, everyone. So my guest tonight is a pretty familiar face. He's a former NFL player from my team, New York Giants, but you also know him as the first male to win America's Next Top Model, along with being an actor. But you know what? Let's take a look at a clip. First time ever. Or Keith, the sexy pro football player aiming for a top model touchdown. I sustained a career-ending injury in football. So now, me as a model, everything that's on my mind is win. Win, 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 win. I'd have never thought in a million years that I would have this opportunity, but my hashtag in the beginning was the one. You know, I'm the one to bring this throne home for the guys. Got it. I'm ready. Thank this you. is America's next Coming to this competition, I'd have never thought in a million years that I'd have made it this far and actually be crowned, you know, the first male to become America's Next Top Model. 
and it's amazing and I feel so favored and grateful. Thank God, my football coaches that motivated me to achieve all my goals. Thank my mother, you know, for not giving up on me and always believing in me and in my dreams. This is a huge opportunity and a huge responsibility that you now have on your gorgeous shoulders. No matter if you're privileged or not, you, you have to believe in yourself. With the mind thinks, the body follows. And as long as you keep that mindset and you persevere, you can achieve anything. You know, look around that. Please welcome to the show my man, Keith Carlos. Keith, how you doing, brother? I'm well in yourself. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, man. And I'm doing great as always, man. Uh, bro, congratulations on uh, a flip-flop career. And I have to say that because... When, when we're younger, we have an idea of what we want to be. And you're somebody that went from the grime from Bridgeport, Connecticut, you know, mm-hmm. and you went through a lot of stories that a lot of people go through, which made you the person you are today. And I always tell people the biggest hustlers in the world came from the biggest strugglers, right? Right. Struggle. And uh, Bridgeport, Connecticut, gang violence and the whole nine, you had to go through that. And I, that's got to play a role in you becoming the great football player that you became. And as we all know, you did sustain an injury. You did play the Eagles and the Giants. Um, what was that like for you when that happened? Like, was it just a spark? Like, what's, what do I do? Yeah. Um, actually, I was actually at a, a crossroads because uh, I've been playing football my whole life, you know, since the age of four. Yeah. And um, I was kind of burnt out. So it was kind of a, 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 a answered prayer, you know, mm. to where I was able to transition uh, from football to something else with a, with a smooth slate and take the, the principles that I learned from football and use them in a whole new uh, field. So it worked out. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, we all know as kids, playing football, basketball, baseball, become a pro is a dream, right? It's, it's a kid's dream. For sure. But – if people don't know, and, you know, you follow football, obviously, so do I, most football players will be lucky if they pass five years, right? Right. And if they actually save their money, because there's a lot of bad stories where people are out two years, out three years, and they made that contract well, uh, that, and then spent it out, right? Um, that's what, what NFL you, stands for, not for long. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You, I, that I've never heard that before. I like that. Not for long. I like that. Tell that to Tom Brady because he's probably going to hear this and be like, he don't he's know what you're talking about. He's an alien? He's an alien. Yeah, yeah he's different. Yeah. You think he's going to try to go for 50? Like be the first I mean, ever human being to play 50 years old starting quarterback? Why not? Why not? He, you know, he takes care of his body. You know, he looks good. He's still moving around like he's 20. Why not? Oh, yeah. And let me tell you, talk about 20. Bro. God gave you a good-looking face, bro. I'm going to give it to you. I like women <laughs> to death, but I can recognize a good-looking brother. Like, you're a good-looking cat. Thank you. Yeah, I'm of a little course. scruffy right now, but. Nah, women, all the women <laughs> would be like, nah, nah, don't do not do it to us. We like the scruff. Yeah. <laughs> I got it here, too. I knew you had a little scruff, so I'm telling women, who who looking prettier right now? I said this to Jimmy. I see Tyler. you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know cheekbones. I see you, man. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We're gonna go out and I, we're gonna be like the hip hop Dalmatians. We're gonna go go on the town. Exactly. And all these good, you know, I get the sisters, <laughs> you get the white girls. We're gonna mix it up like that. We're gonna have a good time. <laughs> yeah. That's but, what I'm um, talking about. <laughs> that was that must have been a really crazy experience. I mean, you know, you talk about it all the time. America's next top model. You got to meet Tyra Banks, who's a supermodel within herself. But this show yeah. I'm glad you're capitalizing on because a lot of people that win shows have become a finalist. You never really see them capitalize after the show is over. Now you sign with Ford, which is the most prestigious modeling agency in the world. How's your experience yeah. been with them since with runways and magazine covers and everything else? Yeah, actually, uh, I signed off the show with Next Models. Right. Uh, then from Next Models, I went over to Ford and I'm, I'm loving it there. Uh, they're rebuilding uh, the LA office, but I'm signed with them pretty much worldwide, and uh, we're I'm, I'm working consistently with them. And um, yeah, just building the clientele and and growing. You know, yeah. the, the modeling industry is with COVID and everything is so up and down. So I'm just you know riding a roller coaster and putting on my entrepreneur hat and making some things happen. Oh, I've been seeing, and the great thing about modeling, especially guys, sorry ladies, guys age pretty well. 
So my friend Alvin Clayton, who you may know, was one of the first black GQ models. That's my boy. Um, he's okay. at ING. He, I think, Shut is, up. you know, I can't I can't say his age because he'll kill me if I say it because I'm actually going to see him soon. Just but, say he's 25. Yes. <laughs> Alvin, you're 25, looking good. And go. Gwen, Gwen, you're always going to be 21. It's Alvin's wife. So um, <laughs> shout out to Alvin, Alvin and Friends Restaurant. Um, that's a great career. And what's great about modeling and intelligent guy, you're not breaking into the acting industry. Um, mm -hmm. You were blessed to, which is pretty incredible. You literally played, not the co-star, you starred in a role, I believe it's called Be Careful, Cardi B's music video. Yeah. Which, I mean, Cardi B's at the top for a game. And that must have been dope to work with her and that. And you ended up being her ex-dead husband, pretty much, in the uh, video. How was it working with Cardi? Man, that was amazing. That was amazing. The night before, I was actually standing in line to get something to eat. I got a DM like, hey, you want to be in the music video? I'm like, yeah, sure. Sent over my information. I want to say a few hours later, I was in the car on my way to like deep in the valley somewhere. Actually, it was a, the church where they uh, shot Kill Bill. So that was uh, pretty cool as well. But she and her team was super, super dope. And uh, it was an amazing experience. Wow. I didn't even know... I honestly, I'm a big Quentin Tarantino fan, so I didn't even know yeah. that was the church. So, yeah, man, that just made this interview so much better. <laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. It was, it was super cool. Yeah, and, and I was like, things. what is that? Oh, yeah. In the um the music video, I had to get into a casket, and I was like, shoot, how many people can say they got in the casket? So why not? A lot of guys, I, I want to say one guy that actually had that that role before me, he didn't, he wasn't comfortable with it. So, you know. See, I don't understand that. It, it, unless you're, unless you're an actor who just wants to stick with this, you have to show all your diversities in everything that you're doing in acting. Even if you're uncomfortable, sometimes the most uncomfortable roles are the most, are not the most, are the greatest roles to have. You know, it shows how you could do this, how you could do that, and it's just like, but it's like, what are you uncomfortable about? You're in a music video. You know, it right. doesn't even make sense. Um, now you've also been in the bold and the beautiful, which is great. Young and a wrestler, yeah. you know, and I've yeah. noticed that a lot of great actors in their careers, a lot of them start out in the soap operas, which is actually a really difficult thing to do because they give you monologues that day. Um, but now you're starting to star in a lot more films. I know you did, uh, the Vegas strip chocolate city with, uh, Jai White, yeah. 50 a Fox, which is yeah. really great. And you're in a new, movie that we have to talk about um black spartans that's coming out 2023 Spartan. yeah tell yeah. me about this role that you're playing and the background of this movie because this movie especially with everything going on right now this movie mm -hmm. i think is so it's such a perfect time to come out to okay. kind of remind people that we're human right right now we can work yeah. together tell me about this film so uh, the film is called Black Spartans. Uh, it was directed by Ben Corey. Shout out to him. Yo, new. Yeah. It's my frat brother, too, uh, coincidentally. Um, but it's about Coach Duffy over at Michigan State in 1960s. He uh, integrated uh, black football players into collegiate football. So uh, Coach Duffy at Michigan State went down to the south and grabbed a couple, uh, I want to say, present day five star athletes and uh integrated us into uh Michigan State and nice. is basically telling the story of uh us uh integrating into a white school, a white environment um in the 1960s. So it was super dope being on that set with all that amazing talent. The the head coach is uh Neil McDonald and man, he's amazing just watching them watching them go and watching them act. And it's like, wow. And he's giving us pointers on set and just watching them, you know, he's just taking it all in. It, it was amazing. You know, uh, was down in Atlanta. We shot that for about uh, a month and a half. And oh, uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. That doesn't even take that long. Some movies take years. And if you guys don't know yeah. the name Neil McDonough, you should. Neil actually, uh, he had a great role in Yellowstone. Kevin Costner mm. killed that role. But for you Marvel fans, Neil McDonough is from uh, Captain America. Uh, if you guys know yeah. him, he plays that a little badass Irishman that was part of the crew that Captain America, you know, teamed up with 
uh, I believe, to fight the Nazis as well. And I think he was in a couple of Avengers. So it must have been great to work with him because he's been in a ton of movies. And yeah. I love seeing NFL players merge into acting. Um, my ba- my boy Vernon Davis uh, is into mm. acting now, and he's doing great. He just got off the film with our Morgan Freeman. And now Shout you're working him. in those. Yeah, and you're working in these yeah. same roles as well. So uh, how does that feel knowing that? Not only is your career taken off, but you're actually working with seasoned actors, award-winning actors, where you could really learn from them, but they might be able to learn a thing from you as well. How does that feel right now? Amazing. And a lot of it I learned from is, uh, like you said, doing the soap operas. You know, it kind of stretched me to where I'm able to uh, act and and hold on to these these lines and everything. It just makes uh, film acting a lot easier you know um because like you said the it's the the scripts are so long you know um they're like monologues so going into uh film where it's a lot more you know chopped up it's a lot easier but watching these veterans go at it it's it's amazing you know it's like sometimes you just get locked in the moment and you forget that you're <laughs> you're filming you're just watching them go you're like oh yeah <laughs> and you get right into <laughs> it but it, it's cool it's like being in an acting class you know um yeah. amazing Neil actually played football as well um, in New York. I forget which school, but really? my school, yeah, my school, Purdue, was playing his school, and we put up a bet for uh, fifty push-ups. We lost, unfortunately. <laughs> so he called me out on set in front of everybody, and I had to bust out my push-ups. And he actually got down and did some with me. So I was like, okay, I okay. see you old school. <laughs> yeah, you know what he was doing, right? He's like, yo, I can't let this guy like show me up like that because he's gonna do uh-huh. that crap. Let me get down and do something right. with him and you know, take his money while I'm doing it to let him know that I yeah. can still hang with the young boys. I didn't know that he actually looked like a quarterback or like a mean safety once he puts his hair like really blonde. So I can definitely see Neil yeah. playing some football, which is uh pretty dope. So now, this film, um, I haven't seen it, obviously, because it's not finished yet. Do th- are they talking about where they may be, uh, what platform they may be putting this on? Um, do you um, guys have any to ideas? Go, well, I heard that it's supposed to go to theaters first. So nice. from there, I don't know. But we'll, um, once I get that information, I'll, I'll put it out there. And uh, yeah. Oh, I would love By it. the we way, my character. Red carpet. Definitely got to do a red carpet. And by the way, I didn't even mention my character name is George Mickey Webster. Right. Yeah. So um, look out for George. Now, let me ask you about the character that you're playing. What's his real significance in this film that you're excited about rolling this character? Well, well, besides him being one of the first of the five guys that has integrated, uh, Mm -hmm. man, he was all American. You know, Um, they actually created the, the position rover back you know which is like a mix of a linebacker and a safety uh because of him so he like changed the game of football so that was amazing and like his character matched mine a lot too you know uh he was a smooth suave funny guy you know that's kind of how i am so it was a you know a easy a easy play so it was good yeah i like it I'm, that's why i wanted to ask you because i knew there was a little more significance of this character and just to let you ladies know and all the guys out there remember we have a great actor in hollywood right now that started out known his breakout role was friday night lights which is michael b jordan so we might have the next michael b jordan right there in one of the future <laughs> black panthers so i'm just going yeah, that in the air yeah, i'm going yeah. that in the air right now so. put that in the universe yeah Yes, keep an eye Wait, on this man. Well, yeah. Hardball, no? Oh, his character? Yeah. What, wasn't he so. Hardball? He, That's he when, went, it was, when it was kicked, possibly. Yeah, he was in the series Friday Night Lights uh, for a That's while. Still, yeah, yeah he definitely played a controversial uh, running back. Where nobody kind of let, but he rolled into the role. And if you guys don't know, that's where he broke out his role. And he's a great, great actor. And still to keep on uh, this movie, Black Spartans, and we don't have to get really into it. I Uh know this film is based on Michigan State Spartans, right? But it's been all over the news. And just to touch on it, Michigan State wants nothing to do with this film, um, which is pretty crazy to think about that because this film not just this film this college 
really played a historical significance in the barriers between white and black college players coming together. Were you surprised when Michigan State sent out a letter of kind of like a cease and desist that you can't use anything Michigan State? You know, were you surprised about that? Um, I actually wasn't, you know. Nothing surprised me these days, you know. You, you could yeah. just – when something good, when something good is going to happen, you kind of just have to prepare, you know, and kind of look at everything from every angle, um, especially when there's big money involved, uh, mm-hmm. especially for an institution, you know, of that magnitude. So I wasn't surprised. And um, hopefully everything works out to where we can work something out and uh, use the name and all the likeliness. So, yeah. Well, you know what? I I think I was surprised. I know you're not, but again, you said it right <laughs> on the thing. Nothing surprises us today because anything's possible. Yeah. Um, what does not surprise me is, you know, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Rachel Richardson for connecting us. Shout out uh, to Rachel. Rachel is uh, a queen in her own heart, beautiful lady. Guys, if you don't know, stylist. She does everything. She's good people. So what does not surprise me is how she surrounds herself with good people. And when I read your backlog, I love how you consistently give back and not just to one type of organizations. Like you're doing stuff for underprivileged kids in Jamaica, right? You're giving back Mm -hmm. to cancer societies. You know, you're big on women equality. Um, Did you, were you doing this before all this pop? Or did you decide, you know what, I have a lot of power now. Let me really dig into a lot of these issues that we're having, especially as a male role model. Mm-hmm. I think I can make a significance. Is this how you started going into that? Well, it's something I always uh, touched on, you know, throughout my whole life, uh, even being raised by a single mother, um, you know, with women empowerment. It's all, you know, hand in hand and growing up in a treacherous environment with the troubled youth. That once was me. So, um, I always wanted to, you know, give back and help people that are coming from the environments that I made it out of. And, you know, it's a, a nonstop and a constant um, job. So even now to this day, I'm building and growing and uh, uh, tightening up the things in, in that area. So, yeah, man, it's a, it's a lot going on in this world. huh? Ugh. Yeah, a lot going on. And um... yeah. I think every day when we wake up, we should all really just look up and just be blessed that we just woke up another day because there are people out there that don't. So uh, and I will say now, since it's significant, you know, bless up to Tyree Nichols family, you know, uh, what they're going through. And uh, yeah, and I think we're all coming together. And unfortunately, it does take significant events like that for people to actually wake up and come together. And I think this movie Black Spartans is one of those movies as well. I think when people leave the theaters, they're going to look at each other and be like, wow, man, like this been going on for this long. Like, you know what? Just because the movies are showing it, that's not where it started. This stuff right. probably was in the 1800s, 1700s. Damn, Saber Two Tigers sure. and Cavemen probably didn't get along. <laughs> you <know? So>, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah, man. But Keith, man, bless up to you. Congrats on becoming, you know, an incredible model, role model, pun intended. Appreciate uh, yeah, <laughs> football player. Now I gotta ask, I know you play for the Giants and Eagles, but predictions, Super Bowl. Who you predicted? Not who you want, who you predicted. Be real. I, I'm I'm going with the Eagles. I mean, how could I not? You know, I have to go with the Eagles. Now, if it was the Giants and the Eagles, I'd win with the Giants. But All right, I'm now going you with you. I appreciate <laughs> you because my brother was a Giant fan. He lives out in Cali now. All he does is root for the Niners. Okay. I'm like, what the hell is that all about? Like, I don't care where you move. You know what I'm saying? Big yeah, up to that. Big up to the Eagles. That? Well, you know yeah. what? We're going to do a side bet. You got the Eagles since I'm a Giant fan. Uh-huh. I'm going to go with the Chiefs. Really? Yeah, I'm a, I'm, know, a, okay. I'm, a, I'm a Mahomes fan, but we'll, we'll see what happens, man. It's uh, But Philly's closer to home. I mean, what's going on there? Uh, I don't know, man. Philly's is a huge rival of the Giants, so it's uh, – yeah. and they gave us a – Are you bitter? You're not, you're not bitter, right? No, not at all. I'm not bitter. <laughs> Shut up, man. <laughs> Stop putting me on the spot. Yeah. 
<laughs> nah, man. Nah, I think it's going to be a great game. I'm just looking forward to Rihanna. You know, let's just leave it at that. Yeah. Let's, let's cut the ball. I'm looking forward to the halftime, the commercials. Yes. And I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing Black Spartan in the films. If you guys get a red carpet here let's in New York, it. we got to do that as well. So, Keith, thank you for being on FaceTime with Todd Ward, man. I appreciate you for being here, man. Hey, man, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Everybody out there, thank you. Go and follow me at Keith Carlos on social media throughout every platform. Uh, Appreciate your support as well. That's right, guys. Follow this man. Keep up with Black Spartans coming in so you see it in the theaters. And, guys, stick around. So, coming up next is Keith's boy and now my boy, Hip hop artist Shelly will be right back with his new hit song coming to you. Stick around. See you in a bit. Performing his hit song, I Can't Stop, here's my man, Shelly. It's like, it's like everybody who counted me out, they gotta use their toes now. You know what I mean? Cause I've been counted out so many times, I need a comma. That's why I get it, cause I'm doing what I gotta, put in pain. Uh-huh. Through the wind and the storm and the rain. Uh-huh. The only thing upon my brain is, I they gonna doubt you, can't forget about you Stop. See what your plan is, yeah. try to reroute you ah. Then they gonna judge you, can't. and try and block you Stop. No matter what though, yeah. don't let them stop you ah. Can't quit it, I can't, can't quit it, I Stop. Can't quit it, I yeah. can't quit it, I ah. Can't quit it, I can't, can't quit it, I Stop. Can't quit it, I yeah. can't quit it I have been deprived, but I won't be denied You feel the pain in my voice and see the hope in my eyes Really so dope to survive And if I do dirt on my friends Cause most of them died the Prosecutor try to bury me alive But if I get knocked out Who gonna carry me inside If I get knocked off Who gonna make my son a man You've never been under fire That's why you don't understand And hey, yo, I had the tightrope in a cyclone Being broke is childish And I'm quite grown I got niggas in the prison who write home And they the ones who keep me in my zone Cause I've been counted out so many times I need a comma that's why I get it, cause I'm doing what I gotta, put in pain Through the wind and the storm and the rain The only thing that's on my brain is Did you have gym today or was that an art day? Gym? Yeah? Yeah uh, Alright y'all, I got y'all food Did you get that ketchup? Mm-hmm Here you go, baby Thank you Wait, oh dad, what are you gonna eat? Oh, no worries. I ate already, baby. Ah, they gonna doubt you. Can't forget about you. Stop. See what your plan is. Yeah. Try to reroute you. Ah. Then they gonna judge you. Can't and try and block you. Stop. No matter what, though. Yeah. Don't let them stop you. Ah. Can't quit it. I can't. Can't quit it. I stop. Can't quit it. I yeah. can't quit it. I ah. can't quit it. I can't. Can't quit it. I stop. Can't quit it. I yeah. yeah. Can't quit it. In the school of hard knocks, being real was an elective For all the times I was speeding and missed my exit For all the times that I sat in front of detectives For all the women I slept with unprotected I thank God, all those things could've defined me But was more like a flame to refine me I was raised in the 90s, early 2000s Section 8, scatter site housing with a pistol in my project Living a life where niggas only get life or lose their life in the process It's hard to process Niggas who ain't got a pot to piss and just having the pissing contest. I was my mindset. Until the ock inside the prison showed me the infrastructure and who designed that. I got in business with myself. I made a contract. 
I found the people who can help me made the contacts Was drug dealing but now, thinking beyond that That stagnation, I don't even beyond that We buying structures you can live in and can shop at By 2030 you gonna see they couldn't stop that, holy one Babe, did you do your affirmations today? No. All right, you want to give it a go? Yeah. I'm smart. I'm strong. I'm kind. And I can accomplish anything and everything that I want to do. So I want to thank my guest, Keith Carlos, and musical guest, Shoei, for being on FaceTime with Todd Warden. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. Now remember, next week is Valentine's Day. So make sure you pick up the phone, reach out to that special someone, and tell them how much you care about them. Guys, I hope you have a great holiday next week. And until the next time, if you're not living a passionate life, then whose life do you live it? Take care, guys. I'll see you soon.